I have five studying techniques for you that got me through biomedicine in King's College London. And let me tell you this, 95% of what I used to do was completely useless. So please allow me to go ahead and save you hours of studying incorrectly. The first study technique is mind mapping slash visual notes. Your notes might look like this, a line by line text heavy structure, making it hard to grasp the interconnections between the concepts that you are writing about. On the other hand, imagine a visual representation, a mind map or a drawn photo, where you see links, connections, and the bigger picture. Mind mapping significantly enhances memory retention by allowing you to write less and see more. It allows you to take very complex complicated text boxes and pieces of information into one photo that is easy to understand. And its effectiveness has been scientifically validated, showing improvements in grades and long-term retention. So you might ask, it sounds complicated, how do I use this mind map? Actually, it's much easier than you think. To give you an example of how this would work, let's say you're studying neurology. Let's look at the six distinct diseases that appear daunting to differentiate. Here's how you can integrate mind mapping into this example. First, identification. You want to begin by identifying the distinct aspects of what you're trying to build connections for. In this case, the six neurological conditions. This step provides clarity by establishing a clear set of elements that you're dealing with. Second step is grouping. Grouping in general means that you have to find things that they have in common commonalities. Let's focus on finding commonalities between these six conditions. And interestingly enough, in neurology, time can serve as a distinguishing factor between these conditions. So let me create a timeline or scale to place these diseases. And doing that allows you to start to differentiate between these six diseases together. Finally, building connection. It is about finding as many connections as we can. You can use symbols or icons or mnemonics. You can be creative with it. You can use different colors to indicate different things. For example, in biology, yellow might mean urine or jaundice, which is yellowing of the skin. Red might mean blood, things like that. And this can be also used for studying business, history, etc. So it's not just limited to medicine. Use visual notes and mind maps, unlock a new holistic approach to learning. On to the second point. To take mind maps and visual notes to the next level, you have to combine them with something else. You can use a platform that allows you to take the images that you've done and blur them out, essentially creating mini tests for you using your own notes. That brings us to our next study technique, and that is Anki. This video is not sponsored. Anki is simply incredible. Anki is a digital flashcard platform that is super easy to use and allows you to actively recall information using your lectures, using your notes, or anything else for that matter, and serve as a way to test yourself. When I say flashcards, people think, oh, it's just a basic flip, you know, just a word, flip it around. No, the platform is very flexible and you can be as creative as you want with it and you can create many different kinds of flashcards like the one I showed you at the beginning. And this costs a total of zero dollars zero you're not paying anything it's free you download it from the internet and you can start using it but regardless of your field of study incorporate anki into your learning regimen step number three differentiating method if you don't know the difference between two things you don't understand either let's unpack this idea using a familiar scenario what is the difference between a stroke and a heart attack often people confuse a stroke with a heart attack however a stroke occurs in the brain while a heart attack occurs in the chest this distinction is fundamental because if you find yourself unable to identify these critical differences it's a very very strong signal to revisit your material and delve deeper into understanding why you can differentiate these two concepts the more differences you can identify the sharper your ability to distinguish between them in practical scenarios these differences even though they're subtle allow you to understand both of them alone better in a sense you need one to better understand the other and on to the fourth study technique the Feynman Technique. The Feynman Technique is a remarkable method to elevate your active recall skills because it shows how much you can retrieve information and explain it to someone who has no knowledge on the topic. If you don't know how to explain this concept to someone, you don't understand it well enough. You, my friend, might have fallen into the trap of memorization. So how do you solve this problem? Let's say you finished studying a concept or a topic. Take an empty piece of paper and pretend to explain to your imaginary friend. I like to pretend I'm explaining this concept to patient because it will make me a better doctor. After you finish, you will notice that you have gaps in your knowledge in certain parts of your explanation. 
So what do you do? You go back and you revisit those same topics. You keep doing that for most of the concept and you explain it again and then you see what you missed and then you slowly enhance your understanding of it. However, this is a very important disclaimer. For this to work, you have to use simple language. You can't just explain it using very complicated terminology. Do not use this technique on every small thing that you learn. Refinement technique shines brightest when it has a huge volume of material to cover. For example, after finishing your studying or after finishing studying a certain topic, then you can start to explain it. For instance, in physics, rather than just memorizing the equation, employ this technique to understand the underlying principles that govern this equation. In history, elucidate events not as a sequence of dates, but rather as interconnected narratives that define the larger context. So use the Feynman technique and see for yourself how much you better understand information. Finally, study for your career and not for your exams. I have to consistently remind myself that I'm not studying for a piece of paper. I'm studying for a purpose. Whether it's an engineer, it's a doctor, it's a mathematician, you are studying to use this information in the future. And how do you study for your career? You understand much more than you memorize. And that is the distinction. Because studying for exams and studying for your career are two different things. You can study for the exam and then after you finish, you achieved your goal, you can forget most of the information. That's not what we want. We want you to understand so that when the time comes, you practically use this knowledge that you gained through these years of university to practically help you in your career. So do this and acquire effective problem solving and creativity in any career that you embark on. And that concludes our video. Thank you very much. And as always, Assalamu Alaikum.